Hey friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. In this video, we are of course setting up my October theme in my bullet journal. I'm really excited to show you how it turned out. It's really autumnal, warm and vibrant and I had a lot of fun with it. I was really busy this week, so this video is coming out a little bit later than normally, but I really hope you don't mind that. But let's start with my October setup. And of course, I'm using my Mellow Days watercolor notebook. And if you want one, you can always use my affiliate code DINA10 for 10% off. So I started off my cover page by taping the left side, because this time I'm going to be painting to the edges of my page. So now I'm mixing color for the sky in my painting and I used white, ultramarine deep and black intenso. I used just a tiny bit of those two colors mixed into the white so I would get a really light color for my sky but still not just white. And here you can see how my gouache looks when I apply it to the paper. It's always this creamy consistency. I just add a bunch of water until it looks like this. Usually it looks like a creamy or milky texture. I was using my flat brush to add in the color for the sky and I just tried to get the most even look for the sky that I could possibly get. I also added the same color to the bottom of the painting because in the painting there is a little river and of course the river is going to reflect the color of the sky as well. For this painting I was using a reference photo kind of loosely. I found it on Unsplash and I will of course link it in the description but it's on the screen right now. Uh, I was using this again really loosely but I just wanted to kind of get the composition right and get this look for the painting because I didn't really have any ideas what I wanted to paint. So it was great seeing this photo. I was like yeah of course I can add some trees and a little river. It was a fairly simple painting but I really fell in love with the reference photo so that's why I did it. I started adding just green color onto the foresty parts of the painting. I added some color pretty randomly. I just looked at the photo and looked at some spots that had darker color in them and more shadow and of course I just added darker shadows to those parts in my painting as well. I really love just building up my paintings. I never finish one spot and then move to another. I usually just add these blobs of color everywhere and then finally starts looking better at some point when you add enough of those messy blobs everywhere. So definitely don't worry about your painting not looking great at this point. It's really normal that it looks a little bit ugly. <laughs> we call it the ugly face. I slowed down some footage here for you so you can better see how I make a single tree. I just tried to be really unintentional with my strokes. I try to have a really loose hand when I hold my brush so it's a little bit more messy and random. It's definitely a hard thing to find out the good balance to paint trees if you are a beginner at painting. I'm not really that good with them either but it's just something that comes to you more naturally when you do it a lot as everything. <laughs> Of course, if you want to, you can definitely leave the trees at this stage. They are really pretty, but I wanted to add some more definition and detail. So I started darkening some of the trees and I also added some highlights to the branches. So I added some darker spots in the forest, especially behind some of the trees that are in the front. And then I started adding some lighter little details to the branches that are closer to the river. So on the trees on the left side, I made the right sides of the trees a little bit lighter in color. And of course, on the right side, I made the left sides of the trees lighter. And I used a light green first, but then I started adding this almost silver looking color which is just this really light green or grayish green and yeah that definitely added some more autumnal look to this painting. I was looking at the reference photo that had the same kind of color as well and it definitely worked with this one so I would highly recommend doing that as well. 
I don't know if I'm the only one, but this cover page seriously reminds me of my last year's October cover page. I have a really similar color scheme in both of them. When I realized that, I was wondering if this was a good idea after all, because I don't want to make two really similar cover pages for two years in a row, but I think they are still different from each other and show how much I've gotten better at painting at least, if nothing else. And of course you're seeing me adding some autumnal colors in this painting as well. I didn't add any really obvious orange trees, but I just added these little blobs of color everywhere and I first just added some orange and then lighter yellow and then some darker red as well. And of course that step is also just an optional one. I of course want my painting to have an autumnal look to that. So I think the orange blobs really tied this painting together. As a last little detail, I worked on the river and I added some darker reflections for the trees on the left side. I also added some little water droplets or ripples, whatever they are called, with the same color but with a smaller brush. So you can see that I added these little lines here in the water and I also added some lighter lines on the reflection side of the water so it looks a little bit less defined and... I don't know, looks more realistic and water-like. <laughs> I'm a big autumn lover, so of course I needed to choose a really autumnal theme for October. My theme is not the most cohesive this time. I just painted some random autumnal things that came to my mind, but I think autumn is definitely like a mindset and a color scheme, so I definitely went with that one in mind. <laughs> Lastly, I added this little moon in the sky of this painting and then I made my October header. This time I decided to work with stamps and because my stamps are not really that good quality and they also leave this annoying edge in the paper if I add too much ink, I just slightly dipped it into the ink to get this outline for all of the letters and then I used my Pigma Micron in grey just to make the letters pop out and I think that was a great idea. I think the lettering style works so well with this painting and yeah, that is it for my cover page for October. That was a really simple one and next we are setting off my October calendar. And like I said, my theme is not the most cohesive one this time, so we are going to be using watercolor for this one. Watercolors are sometimes just an easier and faster way for me to paint, so I decided to use that instead. So I decided to go with some oak leaves and acorns for my calendar spread. This was a really pretty painting. I really love this uh, calendar spread that I created. So of course, oak leaves are kind of this funky shape. I was just looking at a couple of photos of oak leaves and I was like, yep, let's let's go with it. And I didn't really make any super realistic shapes for them. I just sketched some out and started painting them. Of course, I added some green for the base, but then I also added some yellow and some brown to them to make them look a little bit more autumnal and realistic, but definitely not aiming for realism with this painting, even though I'm working on some shadows and lighter spots in the painting. I just wanted to go and paint something pretty fun and not really worry about the painting that much in the end. So I'm using my Van Gogh watercolors that Royal Talents kindly gifted me. Uh, I've been using these quite a lot. I've basically ditched my other palette completely. I'm not sure if these are that much better than my Windsor and Newton watercolors, but I really like the color choices in them. And I also love this brush that came with the set. I've just been using this one with the watercolors. I have never even dipped another brush in these watercolors. <laughs> I was first thinking about a theme that would have more of these spooky Halloween vibes because I know so many people love those themes and October is kind of the peak moment for spooky themes, of course. But I just didn't really find a way that I could include spooky vibes in any of my theme ideas. I think the only way I could have done that with my own style 
the in a way that I would love it would be like pumpkins but I was thinking that maybe it's really a time to create something with gouache and make some more landscapes because I know people love seeing me paint landscapes and I haven't really done that in a long time I have focused on more simple themes lately I would love to know in the comments below if you prefer seeing more spooky Halloween themes for October or do you like more of these autumnal cozy themes in your own bullet journal or others bullet journals. But yeah, as you can see, I just made this fun little bunch of leaves here and then I'm starting to work with the acorns on top. I was just looking at some photos again with acorns and I started just by adding this lighter base color for the acorns and the little hats that they are wearing. <laughs> I started darkening the acorns by adding these kind of line shadows to them. They actually have these little lines in them, I believe, so it was a fun way to make them darker and more realistic. I was just slowly building the colors up, as you can see. With this setup, I mostly tried to focus on having fun with it. I've had a little change uh, in my social media platforms recently because I decided that I won't no longer be focusing mostly on bullet journal content on my Instagram and that immediately felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders because now I don't feel like I have to make all of my paintings perfect or even that pretty because I don't need to share them if I don't like them and of course no one has forced me to share them <laughs> in the first place but it just has felt like I've needed to create content specifically for Instagram to have content to share each month because of that I've had to in my mind I've had to create pretty layouts and make sure that I have enough content to share which means I have enough pretty pages to share but now that I don't have that pressure with me anymore I feel like I can definitely be more free with my art that I create in my bullet journal I can do whatever I want if a page doesn't turn out that pretty it's okay because I don't have to share that it's just my bullet journal and that's that might feel really weird to some people that don't share their bullet journal online but for me that does yeah, it's a big change <laughs> and of course I will continue sharing my bullet journal plan with me's here on YouTube but like I said I won't be solely focusing on bullet journal content on Instagram anymore. But yeah, I made my calendar in a really similar way that I've done before. I made a minimalistic calendar and a minimalistic header and that's it for my calendar spread. The next spread that I'm working on is kind of two spreads at once because I'm making a Dutch door again i said i don't need to worry about making multiple different spreads or even making it pretty i think this is the most boring tracker spread that i've ever done <laughs> so yeah i'm working on my tracker spread and the next spread which is kind of a mix of playlist and monthly goals page so I'm making this Dutch door like I said and the illustration that is going to be shown on both of the pages is this Kingham print. So yeah, I just decided to paint something but I didn't want to spend too much time on it or make a landscape painting or anything like that. So I decided to just paint this Kingham print on the right side. My rule for whenever I've been painting gingham prints has been using lighter color in every other box in every direction. Then I've been working by row so you can see that I'm adding this darker brown color and I'm adding it to only one row and every other row is white. It definitely looks a lot more confusing than it actually is. After I was done with the gingham pattern, I just painted the edges of the Dutch door with this darker green color. I painted both of the sides, but I'm just showing you one because, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Honestly, I think this whole spread turned out to be a little too bland for me. I wish I would have had the motivation to paint a little bit more on this page, but at the same time, it's totally fine. I'm just used to having really extra pages and having really detailed paintings in my 
tracker spreads so having this more simple one kind of scares me but i think it's good to um get used to it as well because i know i won't have the energy to make really detailed paintings in all of my spreads that's just not realistic as you can see, my spread itself isn't that much more interesting either. I have just my monthly goals and my playlist on the right side, and then I have my habit tracker and mood tracker on the left side. I used my Archer and Olive Acrylograph in shade Rice Paper for my trackers, and then I used another brown acrylograph for my headers. I just don't remember where that pen came from, but it's one of their sets for sure. I didn't like the header that I made in my monthly goals page, so I decided to redo that with my stamps. I think it looks so much better and the spread itself looks more balanced now. But now we are getting to my last spread that I'm working on in this setup. It's going to be a really, really simple one, but with a detailed painting. So I'm working on all of my weeklies at one. I just decided to make a lot of Dutch doors for my weekly spread so I wouldn't have to paint multiple different times on each of my spreads. And yeah, let's see how this turns out. So I painted this autumnal forest here in the sides of my spreads. So I decided to first paint the sky with a similar light gray color and then I painted the forest background with a yellow color, making the upper and bottom side of that with a lighter brown color. It looks a little bit weird right now, but when the whole painting is done, it will make a lot more sense. I actually got the inspiration to do this painting from a Pantone painting that I did before. I will also show you the Pantone painting when this page is done. By the way, talking about Pantone paintings, I'm going to be publishing a video probably a week from now or something like that, uh, showing you all of my Pantone paintings that I've done. So yeah, if you're looking forward to that, make sure that you have press the bell icon so you will get notifications when I post that video. We just moved into our new apartment and life has been more hectic than what I thought it would be. I think it's kind of easy to underestimate how much time and energy is going into a move, but I definitely underestimated it this time because I think it was just on my mind for a couple of months now. But I'm really excited because today is the day that we are finally giving our keys away for our previous apartment and we can finally just focus on something else and I can put my mind into some other projects. As you can see, I painted a lot of trees here and I kind of gradually went darker with them when the trees were closer to the front of the painting. I also made the left side of all of the trees here on the painting on the left side darker because I was thinking that the sun is coming from the right and with the other painting that I'm doing later, you can see the sun there. So just think of the sun coming from the right side. So of course the left side of the trees are going to be darker in color. Also, if you are wondering what is peeking from under my book, uh, it's my lens cap. I often use it to balance out the sides of my notebook, but now it's um, showing in the camera. And I just wanted to say if you were confused about that. I'm also making the right sides of the trees a little bit lighter in color because again the sun is hitting them. Later on I'm also adding some yellow to those spots to have that more golden hour look. I'm creating this darker foliage or leaves in the trees using my brush and this stippling or dotting technique. Again I'm trying to be as random with it as possible so it looks more natural. And now I'm starting to paint the ground in this painting. And as you can see, I'm going in with red first and then I'm going in with a lighter orange color in those spots where the light is hitting. And then I'm taking a darker red on those spots that are more in the shadow. Then I'm blending all of those kind of together and then I'm starting to add more intricate details on top later.
So with that lighter yellow, I'm starting to build up the details more and just adding those more highlighted spots on the tree trunks and on the ground. And again, this is definitely a spot where I'm just building colors on top of each other and building in the details and highlights. I'm really excited for the time of the year when it's really autumnal outside. We already have some beautiful fallen leaves on the ground and some of the trees have this beautiful orange color in them but it's definitely not super autumnal yet but usually it happens pretty fast here in Finland. I think usually our autumn is really short. Suddenly everything is colored in this beautiful golden orange color and within weeks or a week it's all gone and it's starting to be really sad and gloomy so i'm cherishing those moments when it's really autumnal and warm and sunny and beautiful by walking outside and going mushroom foraging and just enjoying the fall sceneries Lastly, in this painting, as a final little highlight, I'm just adding a couple of spots of white into this painting, especially on the tree trunks and on the ground. And then this painting is fully done. Of course, I still have the other side to paint, but I decided to do it off camera because it's pretty much the same one. I'm just doing a couple of little last details here on camera because I'm adding the sun peeking between the trees here. I'm just adding a couple of sun flares to tie the whole painting together. But that is it for the spread. I'm actually leaving all of the pages empty. I have decided to work on my weeklies in a different way now, where I'm just writing my things down whenever I want to, without having to make a set space for each day. But I'm really happy you tuned in for this video, and we are now quickly going to flip through all of the pages that I made in this one. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a like and leave an autumnal emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!